By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to continue to open Robin's booster, old school booster pack collection, I should say. And it's actually Robin who's opening it. I'm just filming it and sitting right next to it, witnessing this beautiful opening. And in the first episode, we saw that Robin opened a pack of Chronicles, a pack of Homelands, and a pack of Fallen Empires. Now, if you've missed that episode, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now on the screen, and it'll take you directly to that first episode. Now, today we are going to open up four booster packs of fourth edition. And um, it's, it's a very interesting series. So let's quickly look at what fourth edition is as a set, and then we're going straight to the booster pack openings. So let's take a closer look at fourth edition. So there are 378 cards in this set, and it was released in April of 1995. And it has quite some value in it. The most valuable cards are Sylvan Library, that will cost you 25 euros around that price if you want a near mint Sylvan Library from 4th edition. Then we have Manavolt and Lantex, both for 18 euros. We've got Strip Mine for 9 and Birds of Paradise for 8. And those are about the prices that these cards go for. Um, besides, besides these cards, there are just a lot of useful pools in this set. I mean, think of Mind Twist, think of Swords of Plowsiers, think of Lightning Bolt. There's just, you know, there, there are useful cards in the common slot, the uncommon slots, and in the rare slot. So there's a lot here to get out of these booster packs. Robin is going to open four booster packs. So let's go and look at the first opening. I'm really curious to see what Robin's going to pull out of these packs. Okay, so here are the packs. And just like in the first episode, um, I'm going to switch off my commentary here. And I'm going to let you listen to the original audio recording uh, that accompany this video, so the original recordings. That means you're going to hear some Dutch, um, but obviously you'll recognize the cards and the card names are in English, so I'm sure you can follow. Um, it's just fun to hear the original recording, so enjoy. Okay. 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 Raise that. Oh, stone rain. Open the wall. Play wall. Grape shot catapult. Sea serpent. <laughs> Brothers of fire. Sunken City. Zit in jouw dikje. Fog. Cyclopean Mummy. Hurlan Miniature. Phantasmal Terrain. Powders, gravies, predis, oh gypsies, so, oh, uh, the red on, <laughs> oh, whirling dervish, oh, these look, can I get money, oh, dragon whelp, look, it's a good card, oh, Phantom Monster, I think it's your deck. Yeah. And, and there are Tris Kellyan. No, these is leuk, these is leuk. Okay, so this is the first 4th edition booster pack. Here we see all the cards nicely lined up with the Tris Kellyan, the rare right there in the middle. So on the right side, we see the Uncommons, the Dragon Whelp, the Whirling Dervish, the Phantom Monster. And on the left side, we see the Commons in this booster pack. Um, now, the first thing that you probably want to know is, is there any value in this booster pack? Well, the answer is no, there is no value, maybe one euro, maybe two euro, but there's no real value in this pack. But there is a lot of playable value in this pack. There are a lot of useful cards. Triskelion is a very playable card. Whirling Dervish is very playable. Dragon Whelp is very playable. And what if you would 
open up this booster at a draft, for instance, and this would really be a dream booster to open up. So I think it's a very good booster. Um, but now let's go to booster number two. Spirit Link of the Spirit Link of the World. That's an important of Spirit Link. Yeah. En we beginnen met, oeh, wat is het? Fortified area. Fortified area. Cyclo Cyclopean mummy. Urg Raiders. Clay statue. Iron Claw orcs. How from beyond. Bok Imp. Circle of Protection Black. The Brood. Ik vind dat zo vaak die die Regenerate optie heeft eronder. Drie maanden Regenerate ja. Target Creature. Voor drie rood, zeg maar. Ja. Yeah. Dat past helemaal niet in rood, Regenerate. Nee, nee, het is meestal zwart. Immolation. Ja, zwart of groen inderdaad. Nee, nee. nee. Oh. Frozen Shade. The Rare. <laughs> Siren's Call. Channel. Channel. Who you got? Blight. Goed. Land Destruction. Yeah. Samen met Sinkhole. And the Rare. And the Rare. Ah, oh, hebben yours. Niet zo heel boeiend. Het is niet de beste. Nee, nee. nee. En ook niet heel speelbaar. Nee. Oké, okay, en dit is booster number 2. So take a good look. These are all the cards put together. And um, again, value-wise, this booster is not great. And I think booster 1 was also better pull-wise. Uh, the most noticeable card here, for me at least, is definitely Channel. That's a card you can do some really cool stuff with, and I really like the art. It's again one of those cards, and um, I notice that older sets have this more often. One of those cards that you think, hey, is this an uncommon? I thought it was a rare. And what you see in the, the older sets and revised also a few beautiful examples of that and, and Alpha, Beta and Limited as well, is that you see really strong and useful cards being put in the uncommon slot. Like for instance, Demonic Tutor, or a Swords to Plowseers, or a Soul Ring, or in this case a Channel. So cards that are, in my opinion, rare worthy, or in the uncommon slot, which is which is really nice because it, it makes it very balanced, like you can get good cards in all the slots. Um, but this booster pack, I think Ebony Horse is, yeah, not the best rare to pull uh, when you're opening a booster pack of 4th edition. Uh, let's quickly go to pack number three. The next one. Urban Minotaur. <laughs> Dat is waar. Seeger. Ah, nee, de Skellions. Dat was een leuke poel. Ja, hey, Timmy. Timmy, hier. Yeah. Die is voor jou. Ah, ja, dankjewel. Dankjewel. Oh, cool. Oeh, Lightning Bolt. Altijd leuk. Hele goeie. Hele goeie. Lost Soul. Benelish Hero. Bending. Echt. Giant Strength. Jij hebt toch zo'n deck met Bending? Ja, ja, ja. Uh, Nas Asp. Ook een goede kaart. Fisher. Deze wordt heel weinig gespeeld, maar ik vind hem toch wel aardig. Het is ook een instant. Ja, hij is vijf mana. Ja, en, en twee rood, dus het is echt. Uh, Jotian Soldier. Ook zo'n kaart die ik ook wel aardig vind, maar niet heel veel gespeeld. Hm, ik ken hem niet zo goed. Oh, Lana Riles, altijd goed. Ja. Giant Spider. Zo. So. Hoezo off-centered? <laughs> Durr. Hey, Winter Winterblast. Dat ken ik ook niet echt. Is dat een beetje als Fireball? Ja, hij doet 2 damage vanaf alle vliegende. Je kan x vliegende tappen. 
Ah, dus als jij dus gewoon een agro uh, groen dekje hebt, dan wil je gewoon dingen tappen en uh, door aanvallen. Oh, Oké, okay. je bent anders dan die bed. Oh, Junon Afrit. Die zit al de rare, denk ik, hè? Nee, 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 nee. nee. Oh, die kan naar achteren. Die zit naar achteren. Oh, Blue Ward. Blue Ward. En de rare. Oeh, Oeh oh, Lord, Lord of Atlantis. Is Dat is een leuk. Okay, and here it is. This is an overview of booster pack number three. And as you can see, I finally put a price to this. I think for these cards, when you want to have them booster fresh, if you can find them booster fresh, actually, because that's kind of difficult, uh, you would have to pay around the eight euro, maybe nine euro, maybe seven euro, you know, but based on the prices on card market, it's around the eight euro mark. A Lord of Atlantis, the most expensive card in this booster pack uh, from the 4th edition, Booster Fresh, you're going to pay around 5 euros for this card. Besides that, it's also a very playable card, it's a very beautiful card, beautiful art, really nice. I like that Melissa Benson, the way she uses her colors is very stunning. I mean, this, this piece really reminds me of the Sheevan Dragon. Um, you know, when you hold them next to each other, you can see kind of the comparisons in her, her play uh, with, with color. It's really popping out here the red and the, and the kind of yellowish green uh, enough enough art talk let's look let's look at the rest of the, of the pack here on the right side we see the uncommons winter blast june and afrit both pretty pretty useful blue ward not so much and when we look at the commons obviously there's one card that really pops out here that's the lightning bolt so if you want to get a booster fresh lightning bolt fourth edition you're looking you got to pay around two euros fifty, you know, considering it's booster fresh. So you first have to find one. But if you find one based on cart market, you would pay around two euro fifty. And also we see some other useful cards here. Lanawar Elves, a classic giant spider. A classic has been like reprinted forever. Um, and there's some interesting things here happening at this pack because the cards Seeker and the Asp and Fisher, they have something in common. And that is that they have not been reprinted after fourth edition so if you don't um count the foreign sets that is so just looking at the english uh sets then they are not reprinted so i thought that was an interesting little little fact looking at this specific booster pack so we have um one more booster pack to go what will we pull in that one good luck robin let's go to booster pack number four the last of on fourth edition with a mesa pegasus Ik heb daar een, een summer edition van. Ja. Je ziet nog heel weinig white wing op moment. Ja. Wall of wood. Flight. Grey over. So, guess he is formed. Guess he is formed. You can almost say it's my look. Marsh with Viper. Poison counters. Look. Stone Rain. Grape Shot Catapult. Sea Serpent. Giant Growth. Altijd leuk. Hey, Sunken City again. Fork. De Rare. Ivory Cup. Carrion Ants. Oh, Visions. Look at the top 5 cards. Oh cool. Je mag ze niet in order leggen, toch? Of niet? Nee, je moet een shuffle. Uh, ja, je kan ze shuffle. Shuffle deadline. Je moet shuffle dat lijbe. Ja, maar dat is niet te volgen. Ja, ja. Iets minder, iets minder controle. De laatste rare voor oh. dit je. Oeh. Bad Moon. Oh, Bad dat is Moon. Oké, okay, hè? So this is it, booster pack number four. So all the boosters are open and the total value of this pack is somewhere around the four euros. The value card obviously being Bat Moon, the rare. If you take that out of your pack, booster fresh. If you want to get that near mint on cart market, you probably have to spend between two and three euros. Obviously, you never know if somebody offers it near mint on cart market if it really is near mint, if you know what I mean. Um, so I went a little bit on the high end here with the with the pricing. Now, 
it's always fun to look at the prices and it's always fun to, before opening a booster pack, looking at, okay, what are my top hits and what can I get? Um, the nice thing is, the interesting thing is here is that it was never about value. It was never about making a profit. It was never about investing. Um, Robin told me, listen, I have these cards for so long. I have these sealed booster packs. I've started to play old school magic again and I, I just want to open them. I want to see what's in them. I want to enjoy them. I want to look at the cards. He really wants to experience this as it's, it's kind of like going into a time machine. You go back in time. When I see a fourth edition booster pack, it makes me think back of when I started playing and I had a little a little bit of allowance. I remember a booster pack was six guilders and 50 cents. That's about three euros now, which, you know, euro and dollar you can compare at the moment. So about three dollars and I would get two dollars uh, per week for allowance. So it was really a big deal when I would buy a booster pack. I would like open it up and I didn't know anything about the, the value for me, it was just, okay, what do these cards do? And um, I, I didn't even, I, I, I knew there were things like uncommon and rares, but I looked at the cards completely different from a completely different standpoint. And that's kind of what's happening to me when I see somebody opening a 4th edition booster pack or a revised booster pack is it kind of takes me back to that, you know, th those first years of, of magic as a game, but also for me as a magic player. So thank you, Robin, very much for sharing these openings with us here on Timmy Talks on the channel. And remember, this is just the start. This is the second episode. We have the third episode coming up and we will be opening um, another booster pack. And I'm just having to look here. We're going to open a booster pack of revised in the very next opening. So um, here's a little preview of that opening. Um, so keep an eye on the channel and the next opening. So episode three of a series of six in total um, will go online next week, Tuesday. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking, leaving a comment. What do you think of these openings? Do you have any booster packs that, you know, your hands are itching to open? Um, <laughs> but, but you also kind of are on the investment train, which I completely understand as well. Uh, let me know. I'm curious. Um, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. I'm trying to get to that 1300 um, subscriber mark here. So with your help, hopefully I can get it. Uh, please do not use an ad blocker because the revenue income helps me to continue working on the channel to get better equipment, to get um, more cards and to play, to record more matches. Um, that's about it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>